I'm Travis from Recording King. Welcome back to our video about the interior of three different wood body resonators that we make. If you want to hear a short clip of how each of these models sound, you can check out the video that leads right into this that shows each of these three models and actually has them strummed. However, this video is going to actually go inside and let's see what's in each of these instruments. Any resonator guitar, the engine that really powers it is the aluminum cone. There's all sorts of info about the history of how resonator guitars were created and established, so I'll leave you to use your internet smarts and figure that part out. However, we're going to see the inside of our particular instruments today. I've got the Mickey Mouse gloves on so that whoever gets this guitar after me is going to have a nice, totally fingerprint-free piece of metal here. Uh, but we're going to look first at the Maxwell Series Square Neck Resonator. So first, the cover plate. This shape and this particular cutout pattern is a very traditional spider bridge style pattern. So you'll see that on a lot of spider bridge instruments. As we pull out the cone and the spider bridge themselves, you'll notice, of course, this kind of web-shaped bridge area that has feet that actually touch the cone, as well as an ebony and maple saddle. And the cone itself basically is concave with one convex section. This area, if you were to take apart your own instrument, the edges of the aluminum cone are quite sharp, so make sure if you're doing this at home that you're using proper caution. The cone itself is what is truly going to be generating the, the sound as the strings transfer energy to the cone, but the interior of the body also affects the sound significantly. The Maxwell is a square-shouldered body shape, and inside it has a sound well with parallelogram cutouts. So the sound well definitely kind of compresses some of the sound, traps some of the sound, and the way that the actual frequencies reflect through the parallelograms creates some of this instrument's unique sound. If you look inside, you'll see that parallelogram shape. You can, of course, imagine your awesome riffs going through each of those open ports, and then, of course, coming back out of the instrument to create the sound that it has. So this is a very focused, bluegrass style sound. Uh, once again, spider bridge, spider cone, and parallelogram sound well on the Maxwell. Next, we're going to look at the Phil Ledbetter signature model. One of the things that Phil really wanted on this was an open pedestal sound well. So it lacks the parallelogram kind of wall that's inside the body. You'll see the same spider bridge style cover plate, the identical spider bridge, maple ebony saddle, and hand-spun aluminum cone. However, inside the instrument, come on and take a look at this. You'll see that there's no separation anywhere. There are four posts that basically connect a back brace to the top, but other than that, the sound is free to travel throughout the body with no walls or hindrances. So that gives it a lot more open sound. Doesn't have quite the same high-mid focus, but really has a wide open, loud, and really kind of robust sound. And now for something completely different, we're going to look at the rattlesnake. This is a biscuit bridge and a biscuit cone, so you'll see the difference automatically. First, of course, the cover plate. Our particular cover plates do have a removable hand dress, but we're removing more than just the hand dress so that you can see the guts here. This is a traditionally called a chicken foot uh, pattern, and you can, of course, see the number of chickens that had to go into actually stamping that. Uh, however, then when you get to the cone, it's a totally different thing. The entire surface, other than right underneath the biscuit, is only convex. And so you have this cone that is pointing upwards instead of downwards as the spider cone does. So part of that creates a different sound. It's a different type of cone. The way that the bridge is affixed is different. And also it's a wooden biscuit, once again a maple and ebony saddle, but just the difference of that biscuit versus the spider bridge itself makes a huge difference sonically. Then also, inside the rattlesnake, you will see, once again, similar to the fill, kind of an open pedestal design, where this also has four posts, but they're in a different placement. The whole idea of the inside is just a little bit different, where it has F-holes, uh, the body shape is not quite the same as the more kind of traditional square neck, and you'll get a much more swampy, hollow sound. So this is a great blues guitar. This type of thing, with the round neck especially, would more commonly be played traditional style, you know, just as you would another guitar, 
with a glass slide just on your ring finger or pinky finger. So a little bit different than the other two models. So there you have it, an inside look at three different models, the Rattlesnake, which we have here, the Phil Ledbetter Signature model, and the Maxwell Series Square Neck. And we hope that you've enjoyed looking inside the instrument without the need of a screwdriver or even x-ray glasses. And get out there and play. Remember, music is the tonic of the soul, so make it happen.